How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here by me at Scrub Games. And today is a new cube draft video. And what that is for is we're going over the set 15 update for the cube. Now, this isn't, these aren't cards that are definitely being added to my cube because at the moment I've completed, uh, I finally finished the building my cube in person. And at the moment, the list feels fine. Uh, but I, what I want to do is update because currently the number of packs number of cards in a pack is 14 but I want to update that to 15 but I feel that we need a few more sets to add that extra card per pack uh, soon but if you want to do um, if you want some advice on some cards in the set on set 15 that would be good additions to the cube here is a video I thought I'd make to make sure that there's information uh, and some advice about which ones are good to add so we go my color, and we'll start off by showing what um, what options. There's some that have quite a few, and some that have a few, but um, still, there's some good ones to choose from in set 15. So the first one, we, so we'll start from red, and the first one we have is Speed Rush and Gohan. So this is a nice one because it's a free cost 15, um, and it's a counter attack, neatly attack play this card, uh, but it's not going to be free energy because of its permanent where during your opponent's turn reduce the energy cost of this card um, by one. And this is really good because that means the two cost negate, which in cube draft is this isn't too bad. This is pretty decent in cube drafting, because the format's limited. And it's got a nice auto of when you play this card, you choose one you choose one or two effects, you have a draw card, or choose up to one euro red units and cards and a market to it. So the nice thing about that is for two energy, you can negate an attack, get a fifteen K on board, and then draw a card to so replace itself. It's pretty nice. Uh, that's that's very decent for um, red, and also being one specified red means you don't have to be heavily invested in red just to play this. So if you're splashing red as one of the colors you're building with your cube, it's a very nice one to play and a good addition to cube. Then for the next red gun, we have SS and Goten opposing the demon. So this is a two cost 15k, just like Gohan. Uh, well, probably like probably unlike Gohan. Gohan's only in your opponent's turn, where this is during. Uh, Anytime, and it's what just like Gohan Bell, it is one specified red, so very easy to play. And it's got a nice auto when it attacks, you choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards, it gets minus 10k power for the turn. So, this is a very handy one for taking out cantrips because uh, the cube is rife with cantrips, uh, which are really handy, especially uh, like for cube drafting. Cantrips are a necessity and very helpful. And this is nice ways if you get, like, as I, I think I've gone over in my video before, it's one of my top five cards are the ones in each color where you can discard a card, draw a card every turn and getting rid of that from your opponent is key because that means if the longer they have that on the board then the more they're filtering for the deck to go faster to some cards they didn't want or even cards they want in the drop to get their effects off uh, and going for the deck a lot quicker to see more things they want. So having this as an easy way to remove those are quite nice because they don't have barrier and getting rid, rid of ever cantrips or ever want, or even anything 15, uh, 10k or even uh, using on something that you want to uh, Attack over and kill easier. It's quite easy. So if you got something rest minus 20k, you swing in, swing into it, minus it by 10k. Now it's 10k for the turn. It's got down from 20 to 10k, making it easy for you to kill. So this is a good addition. And then the last one for red, we have is Trunks Journey Beginning. So this is another one that we've got. I think we've got every single version of this in the cube, which are uh, self awakenings because there are some leaders that self awaken them with their own effects and some that are quite old and don't awaken by their own effects and need a bit of help. And Trunks is one of these cards that help you stop awakening and give you a beneficial effect because of uh, it's a one drop 5k where you, when it attacks you add a card from your life to your hand as the cost when it does it and then it gains 10k power uh, plus 10k power and double strikes meaning a 15k double strike. So this is handy for dealing with unisons when your opponent, if your opponent drops any and even putting some double strike pressure and helping you stop awaken. So it's an all round great card and having more of these in the cube uh, is quite handy. And being a say uh covers two different archetypes as well. That is it for the red ones. So for the rest, for the next one we have blue cards. And the first one, which might seem the obvious choice, is SS Kaba Proud Zenith. So this is a really nice card and an SR of the boot for the cube because it's a 5 cost 19, but that 5 pretty cost isn't always how you're going to play it, but as we know in cube draft it's a lot easier to play cards with the printed cost than use their effects. So it's a unique, like unique that never matters in the cube, so anytime a uh, card is unique I'm not going to bother going over that because uh, the, unless you 
you design your cube differently. My cube is Highlander, where you only have one copy of any, any card anyway. But it's a dual attack blocker with two altars and, and a, an activate skill. So with the first altar, it's when it when it's played, you choose one of two effects. If it's your turn, you draw two cards, which is really handy. Uh, almost on the power with um, the Go Cheater something, uh, something Fusion, Ultimate Fusion, I think it's called, which uh, allows you to draw two cards and do something at the same cost as well. But if it's your opponent's turn, you can place up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of four or less at the bottom of its owner's deck, and then switch it to one of your blue energy tactic mode. So it's quite nice because you can play it in cheaper at three energy, so that's quite nice to pay for two energy, bottom deck on your opponent's card, and untap an energy. Well, for, for, yeah, so you get two energy to bottom deck something. And do also know that this is also some through barrier removal because just like how um, the card escapes me now, King, Pre King Vegeta's Imposing Presence, that card gets through barrier because it just says, it doesn't say choose, which barrier only works on if your uh, opponent tries to choose one of your cards with a skill. This says place, so it gets through barrier, so those pesky deadly defenders and things like that or uh, other ones that have Barry they want to get rid of and this card can easily get rid of and bottom decks them which is nice I meaning you have to go through the entire deck to get back to it and then we have the other auto where at the end of your turn you switch to active mode so you can attack twice and have it restand as a blocker and the way you're going to be playing it cheaper in this deck which is e easy enough just like it is in uh, competitive play is for his active main slash battle where for one blue or two of any other, ever, uh, any other energy if there are a total of three or more blue and or yellow cards in your battle area and or combo area, play this card from your hand. So that means you can have a combination of any three cards either in your battle area and combo. So you can have two on board, combo one to drop this, or one on board, combo two to drop this, or three, three in your battle area or three in your combo area to drop this. So it's very easy to play and very cheap to play because it's got that one specified cost in its um, printed cost and in its effect to play it cheaper. So a very strong card to help out blue. And it's part of the Universe 6 stuff as well, so there's more Universe 6 cards to get the boost that arch type in the cube as well. Next one, I think mostly all of the the blue stuff is going to be improving Universe 6, giving them more options as the arch type and giving it more consistency. So we have Saiyan Kaba, well, Saiyan, oh, that's right, Kaba Saiyan Pride. Uh, so not going over this much, it's the exact same as the Trunks. Uh, but instead of double strike it's critical, so once again never self awakening it's very handy and covers the Saiyan Alien and Universe 6 Archetype. Next one we have is Kefla, Universe 6 Fusion Warrior. So this is a very nice one for um the cube. Now I'm not gonna go over his active immune skills because they're not relevant to the cube at all, because they're not for, first of all the, the uh, first active immune skill is not great to use. Like it's not gonna come up that often. And you you can easily hard cast extending at two cost. And the second one is not usable because there's no blue universe six card, uh, Lena card, in the cube. But mainly what you play it for is is a two cost 15k. You do need two specified blues, so you have to be heavily more heavily invested in blue to use this. But it's also the great part about it, where when it's played from your hand, you draw two cards, then choose one card in your hand and put it at the bottom of your deck. So you essentially draw two brand new cards and put them back in your deck. And this is really handy for if you've got things that you want to play from your deck from effects like uh, I know one of my favorites is the red frost chain where if I've drawn it in my hand I don't want it I want it back in my deck so that way when if I drop the one drop frost and I got two drop frost in hand I want to put it back so that when the two drop the one drop frost gets removed by um removed from my, my opponent's skill I get to play the two cost from a deck rather than my hand so I don't use hand advantage so things like that make it very very strong just drawing more like it's essentially a pseudo cantrip uh, but also fix your hand as well then we have Kale ready to fuse. We have never Kale, as you know, with the cubes. Well, we have the white well, mine, especially. We have the yellow uh, Khalifa stuff and the blue Kale stuff. So there's quite a few blue Universe 6 cards already. And there's a lot of Kale stuff. And this is more for the blue Kale archetype and Universe 6 in general. So we're not going to go over the activate main. Actually, we've got the activate main because it is usable. So. With the auto, it's uh, when this card is played, you've got the top five cards in your deck, and I add up to either one blue universe six card with energy cost of three or less, or one blue unison card with a specified cost of two among them to your hand, dish off your deck. So as I said, we're getting more universe six blue universe six cards, and there's already a lot of uh, the ones in the deck in the cube already for Kale, and I think there's Khalifa ones. I don't know if there's a Khalifa one 
that's the other one that's coming in from this set that's already searchable off this effect. But that's really handy and also helping out uh, giving a, a never searcher to blue unisons as well. It's quite handy because I know red has some and I think some other colors have them. So it's nice that blue is getting a bit, few more. And his activate main is once per turn for one blue. You look up to three cards from the top of your deck, add up, add up to your hand, add up to one blue Khalifa or Clef Kefla among them to your hand and shuffle your deck. And the rate rest get put to the bottom of your deck in any order. So there's not any blue Khalifas in the queue or at the moment, but there are Kefla, so it gets there's just brand new Kefla, and also there's the seven drop one that is also in the cube as well. I think there might be another one, but don't quote me on that because I can't remember it off the top of my head. But that's uh, an extra effect that you can use, but you're not always going to use. You may, you're only going to be using its auto. And for the next one, we have Kale Rampaging Demon. So this is a uh, once again another one for Kale, and as I said, it's a lot easier to play. Uh, cards that are higher costing in cube because the game's gone a bit longer and it's not as fast paced as uh, competitive play because it's, it's a Highlander format and it's all down to deck building and strategy but this uh, Kale Rampage Demon can easily be played and also get both its effects off quite easily in cube so it's a 5 cost with deflect and double strike and it's also is when this card is played without using skills and I'm not sure in the queue if this way to play out for skills, but it could be. You either you choose one of two effects. First of all, the first one is choose all your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of three or more. Place them at the bottom of owner's decks. And if your leader card is blue kale, which it's not, you place it to one card from the top of your deck under this, your leader card. So that's quite nice. Alpha five energy play this. And put all your opponents cost three or more battle cards at the bottom of their owner's decks or board wipe. It's quite handy. But the better one is the other option where if you have seven or more energy, you choose all your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, place it at the bottom of their own deck, and this card gains barrier and dual attack for the turn. So this is a nice way, this is technically even blue a nice game ender, because there's only two specified blue, so it's very easy to pull off. And especially at seven energy, you can just pay five and have two energy open for something else. And then you get yourself a nice 30k double strike and dual attack here that has barrier and deflect. So that's really, really fun and really, really strong. And then we have Sonal Universe 6 Combination. So this is reminiscent of what we got in set 2 because it's, it's a 3 cost 15k with a 1 cost 10k combo. And his ulti is at the end of a battle in which this guy was using the combo from your hand. You play this card from your drop air in rest mode. So this is the same thing as, I want to say, the future Gohan from set 2 that uh, every color, color has. And some colors even have like a extra one or, extra one or two from other sets and now just give blue an extra one and being in the universe six um archetype gives more like more archetype and more synergy for universe six in the cube. And then for the last one we have Vanos right on time. So this is a free cost 19k with dual attack and a counter play skill where you play this card and if the battle card being played has an energy cost of three or less, return it to its owner's hand instead. And you're not gonna be paying that free energy for it. In your opponent's turn for a counter play because of its permanent where in your opponent's turn place the energy uh, reduce the energy card of this card in your hand by one so you can either play it as a free cost 19k dual attack which is nice or save it in your hand to be a two cost counter attack that comes down for a dual attack 19k and once again part of the universe six archetype so it's adding a bit more uh power to the universe six in the cube so it's a very nice card and can be very impactful as well so that is it for the blue cards. We've got seven good blue cards in the in the uh, set add to the cube if you want to. Now we go on to the green ones. So first one for the green, uh, I think there's only four for this, might be more, I can't remember. So the first one we have is Training, Go Training Goal Son Goku. Now once again, I'm not going to go over the end of it, Minx, it's not relevant to the, uh, it's not relevant to what you can pull off in the cube because it's it requires certain cards like the green stuff that does anyway. It's at 15, but it's only the auto you're going to be triggering in the cube. So the auto is when this card is played, you, look up, you can look up to three cards at the top of your deck, choose up to one green Son Goku card with entry cost of five or less, or one green unison with a specified cost of two among them out of your hand. So this is, once again, another green card that can help you search for unisons, because there are some good unisons in green in the cube, and also adds a bit more to the Krillin Goku archetype in green, which is a very nice and very enjoyable uh, that I personally like in the cube. And then we've got 
I never go good at add to that that you can search, being Kai Kensun Goku Maximum Games. Once again, I'm not going over his activate main because it's not relevant and it can't be used in the queue. Um, it's mainly because it's auto, so it's a free class 90k with two specified greens. You have to be a bit more invested in green in the set, but then green is one of my favorites in the queue. And it's got an auto where when this card is played, draw one card and choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of four or less and, and KO it. So this gives some extra removal in green while also replacing yourself. So it's nice to give yourself a 19 attacker, some removal, and replace itself in your hand. So a very good card and a very nice one for the cube. And then we have a new great ape, which I'm happy about because uh, I love the great apes in the cube. And they're starting to span across almost every color. So you can think of rainbow um, ape deck. And building apes is one of those really challenging, uh, hard to do in the cube because there's so many good great apes. And but when you put it together, even with the fill cut, the extra card as well, and that's it as a nair back from set uh, set three. It's a very strong one, and this is a four cost twenty k blo uh, blocker, which once was by green, so you can easily hard cast this if you want to. Uh, it's got an auto limit one that you could potentially pull off. I can't remember if there's any blocker of Vegeta's in the cube, um, but when one of your green non great uh, Vegeta cards or blocker is removed from your battle area by opponent's skill, you can play this card from your hand. So I think that is playable, I'm not 100% sure because I can't remember how many Vegeta's there are in green in the cube and if any of them are blocker, just thought I'll go over that in case. But the main skills are it's auto and activate main. With the auto being once per turn when this card attacks, you can use one card in hand and discard it. So that's nice that you can have a um, attacker that can uh, make him discard a card from hand uh, and be 20k. So that's quite handy, a bit of hand, hand destruction, fair hand destruction there. But you can play it a bit cheaper as well with that to main where for two green, if a player has filled a filled extra card in their battle area, play this card from your hand. Now I think there's one in all colours but from uh blue. I'm not getting black and white colour obviously. because uh, I know there's good ones in red with like Planet M2, there's ones in green, there's quite a few in green, and there's ones that are in yellow like uh Platinum Vegeta, which is quite handy. And it doesn't it, uh it doesn't like specify whether it's a certain player, it's just you, if either player has filled a card, an extra card in their uh, battle area, then you play this for two green, which is really nice. Getting a for two green, a 20k that can then attack and discard the card. And if you've got a fill card like um, what's it called, Planet Vegeta, this then restands the end of the turn, so you can have this blocker. It's very nice combinations like that. And then the last green card we got, I think it's the last green card. Don't quote me yet. Is a Yasrobi confronting invasion. Now in the queue. As I said, as I mentioned when uh, going over Vegeta, is there's quite a few great cards in the cube. And uh, this gives a nice, thematic, interesting uh, use in the cube. Like, just the cube, especially not competitive play, this is probably quite terrible. But in the cube, this is quite uh, interesting to negate the take, like a meta pick, depending on what people are uh, drafting when you play. So it's Yajirobi confront Confronting Invasion, 1 cost 4k, and it's a counter-attack skill, where you negate the attack, play this card in rest mode. If the attacking card is a Great Ape or Demon Clan, battle card, you can choose it, uh, you choose it, KO it, and then your opponent draws one card. So that's quite handy. So if you've got, uh, your opponent's got a big ape on board, a great ape on board, you can negate the attack, kill it, and they get, but they, then they do replace the card by drawing a new one. But you get rid of a 4 cost 8 that if they paid 4-4, four, 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 you've basically just plus 3 energy by KOing it for 1 energy. So it's just a nice tech to uh, give a bit of interaction with different archetypes in the cube. So yeah, that was all for the green cards. Now for the yellow cards, I think we've got the same 4 cards, but then once again, don't quote me on that. So the first one we have is Turrell's All Too Easy. So this is a 5 cost 20k, double strike, and with two skills. The first one will be is also when its card is played, you choose, up, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, KO it, and then choose one. You either draw a card or you choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and KO it. So you either get a KO and a draw or two KOs and then a 20k double striker. That's very handy. And you can easily pay hard cast this for um, in the cube, which is quite handy. But if you want to cheat out cheaper, you can use that to be main for two yellow energy. If your leader card is a mono yellow saying card, which I think in the cube there might be, I think there's two at least. There's two leaders you can use this with to cheat out easier. Just trying to think of, yeah, there's only two. Sorry, I can't remember the rest of them. Uh, you play this card from your hand. So that means with two two certain leaders in the cube, if you draft them, you can play this out cheaper. But otherwise, you're paying this for five, and it's still worth paying for five in cube because that's a very strong auto. 
And then we have a Never Tales card in yellow, and this one's quite a um, one that I feel is only decent in the cube and not at all usable in competitive play, just because with the stuff for turtles in competitive play, it doesn't work with what's meant to, and it doesn't really, it can't really work well with the other one. But it's a four cost twenty k with dual attack, and the main good thing about this, because uh, I don't think you're going to be using the auto, is it's permanent. Where if an opponent's battle card will be killed by this card's attack, you gain control of it instead, and you may switch it to active mode. So that's quite handy. Uh, like you can just try and use this to take down your opponent's battle cards, and if you succeed. You take it and then switch it to active mode ready to use. That's uh that's pretty amazing. Um but uh so that's a very interesting card in cube and probably and could potentially be a strong one and it's very easy to play as well, because as you can see, it's a four cost with one specified yellow, so you just need to take in a bit of yellow to play this card in your cube in your deck if you if you draft it. And I'll go over his altar because it could Technically, can max. I think there are some life flipping cards, but when this card is played from your hand, you can use it to one face a battle card in your opponent's life and play it in your opponent's battle area in rest mode with the skills you get for the game. So, the only re relevant thing I feel that could be is by ending someone if you can flip the last card and it being a battle card, but outside of that, I don't think it's great giving your opponents something from their life uh, by playing a battle card in rest mode because it. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I don't think you're going to be pulling that off a lot, but it's permanent as where it shines. Next we have Son Goku, Steadfast Assistance. This is a nice counter play that adds a cube that can uh, have his cost reduced because it's a 3 cost 5k blocker. And it's got a counter play where the battle card being played is, is played in rest mode. Then you play this card and draw one, so that's quite nice. But you rest whatever they're about to play if it hasn't got deflect. Play the, a blocker on your board and then replace yourself by drawing one. And it's not bad. That's not bad for free energy, but you can make it cheaper with its permanent. Where when activating this card's counter skill from your hand, reduce the energy cost of this card by one for each yellow extra card in your battle area, energy area, or a drop. So that's so it's going to be very easy if you're drafting yellow. I can see it because there's quite a few extra cards in each color in the cube, and it doesn't count mono yellow. So if you get the dual color ye yellow extra cards like um possibly poison that's in the cube, you can reduce it even more as well. Well, you can reduce it using that as well. So it's quite a good card. And a nice addition. It's very generic. And then I think it's the last one, but we've got Sun Goku, a gift from the earth. So this is like more of a power play and a, like unison control in the cube. So we got Sun Goku, a gift from the earth, five cost twenty k. Only two specified green as well. Uh, sorry, it's two specified yellow. It's not green card, it's yellow. And it's got deflect and blocker. Also has a permanent where you can play it cheaper. For for each marker on unison cards in play, reduce energy cost of this card in your hand by one. So it just says unit cards in play, so that means either yours or your opponent's. So your opponent's got a unison that's got three markers on, this is a two cost. If you've got a unison with three markers, it's a two cost. If you and your opponent both have unison cards, and the combined markers are three or more, you've got two cost. And then it's got an activate, two activate mains. The first one is what um, is a really nice one to help tr use the activate main easier without sacrificing your unison. Where once per turn you can choose one uh, choose one of your opponent's unison cards with three or more markers on. Note it's got to have three or more markers on your opponent's unison. When you remove markers from a card using this card spirit boost skill this turn, you can remove that many markers from the chosen card as well. So that's why nice. so you can use your opponent's unison cards and use spirit boost. And it's ever activate main is limit one. So you can know, activate this card as a skill once a turn because there's there's only one copy of this card in the cube or my cube anyway. Whereas Spirit Boost 2, so take two markers off, well, mainly your opponent's unison, is what you're going to use this for. You choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of 4 or less in rest mode, KO it, and then this card becomes a 20k double striker for the turn. So that's very, very strong. And if, at the very least, you can use it as a blocker if need be. A 2 cost 20k blocker is not too bad as the bare minimum. And yeah, that was it for the yellow cards. And then we have one black card being Demon God Deborah Skill Hunter. It's a 3 cost 20k. Activate main makes no difference uh, because it's not going to be usable. Well, you could be used, I'll still go over it. But it's mainly for the altar where limit one with sky attacks draw one. So you can use, so every time you attack with it, you can draw one and be in 20k free cost. It's not too bad with no specified cost, I mean, you can play it no matter what you're drafting. And you could activate his activate main worth one, one black energy. So if you've got a charge of black, which isn't beneficial in this in the cube because there's no nothing with a specified cost black cost in the cube. If your opponent has a skillless battle card or unison card in play, 
face cloth in your hand. Now it's easier to pull off if you do use it by charging a black because there's quite a few skill loss cards and a skill loss archetype that's very strong in the cube. Now next we have the multicolor cards. I think there's about seven of these in the cube. So we've got some good ones from the latest set, like ones that I really like the look of. And first one is Vegeta, Omnipotent Elite. So it's got a dual attack and blocker. Because I'm not going to go, once again, not going to be unique because there's a Highlander cube for mine. And energy exhaust every egg. Every multicolor has got energy exhaust. So it's got two autos and also permanent, which helps. Uh, it's like one of those that each color has almost got to negate energy exhaust, where if your opponent has five or fewer cards in their hand, negate this card's energy exhaust skill in all areas. So this is quite easy. It's quite a nice card where if you go uh, second, your opponent goes first, charging energy. If they don't do anything or just play something for one energy, they're then down to five or less cards in hand. And then you can straight away turn one, charge a dual attack, dual, uh, multicolor energy, turn one inactive, which is quite nice. But if you don't do that and you play it, it's got an auto first where you draw one, you draw a card when you play it, which is a nice cantrip skill. And is ever auto is one per turn if your leader card is green, so you mean you got a, so it gets a big benefit with a green leader. At the end of your turn, or when you activate this card's blocker skill, switches card active mode. So it means you can get uh, it's really nice. So if your leader is green, if you do draft a uh, green leader and this, you get a dual attacking 16k, but then restands it into the block, and then you can block one attack and then restand it and block another. So you get two swings and two blocks with this card, so that's very, very nice. And then next one we got is some new arrival cards. So these are ones that I really like and I hope they we, every color combination gets one because this gives a bit more option uh, a bit more flexibility and be able to play them. This one is SS Broly Annihilation Personified. It's a four cost 19k. And it's got a rival uh, red green where you either pay a red or a green. That's what I mean by I hope every color gets this because if every color combination gets this where they can choose which color of the two to play it gives even more variation um because sometimes you get color combinations where you have more of one color than the other and this gives a lot more flexibility in using them so the first also i'm not going to go over because there's a i don't think there's a way to play it from your deck but the main auto is when it attacks you choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it. So that's nice to be able to attack and get removal in that. And actually promotes interaction where you've got to attack something to get the effect, which then opens up, a, unless you're attacking a unison, a combo phase for your opponent to do something. And then we've got uh, another ape. So we've got Great Ape Raditz Might Unleashed. So this is, once again, it's another one, as I said, in cube. You can easily cast things for their printed cost, and this is a four cost where you gotta pay at least one red and one green. It's got dual attack and blocker. Now I'm not gonna go over the first auto because there's no way to do it because there's no blocker raddits in the cube in the cube to trigger that. But it does have a nice auto where when it attacks, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, which are energy cost greater than the, the number of cards in their hand and KO it. Now I don't know if this is gonna come up that often because as I said you can charge quite late. But if you if you can get out early where you're cheating things out earlier, because uh, you can there's some cards where you reduce the cost to play them, you can get this effect off. And it's not once per turn, and this card has dual attacks, it can trigger twice, which is quite handy. But even then, even if your opponent is not I just realized it's not regarding how many cards in in the energy is in hand. So if you if you play a more hand destruction focused deck in the keyword draft of more hand destruction focused deck. This is really strong because if you can get your opponent stand down to zero, you can then be attacking and then wiping out anything they've got on board if they've got no zero cards in hand. And you can play it cheaper just like the Green Vegeta one, where you use an activate main by paying one red and one green. If a fill extra card is in play in a battle area, once again, no, either player, it can be in either player's uh, field. You play this card from your hand cheaper. So you can G out for two and get a very decent card as well out of that. And then we got another group, and this time it's a rival one. So a lot of uh, red green love in this set because uh, not they only chose to support a few color combinations. I think two color combinations got shafted in this in this set. But uh, for this one, we have King Vegeta Great Apes Rule. So this is once again a rival, but unlike probably where you haven't got you got the option of what color. This one is a rival red green with uh, red green by paying one green. And it has just blocker. Um, but it also has a two decent autos. Well, two very strong autos. The rest one being by paying one red, 
When this card is played, your opponent may choose two cards in hand and discard them. If they don't, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards and place it in his owner's drop area. So it's nice that also gets around barrier, where uh, actually no, it doesn't get around barrier. Sorry, because I just read it. I just remembered because uh, it says choose, uh, but it gets around things that can't be killed apart from indestructible, uh, because it says place in his owner's drop area. So if there's anything in the, I can't remember off the top of my head once again, if there is anything in the cube that can't be killed or has a skill to say it can't be killed, but if it does have that, then this gets around it by placing it in the drop area, and then it's ever auto, which. Uh, gives you the benefit even if you don't have Planet Fatigue on board. At the end of your turn, you choose all great ape cards in your battle area and switch into act mode. So this is really nice, because um, if you're playing yellow, or drafting yellow apes, in, or if you're just drafting apes in the cube, you're going to want to go for a bit of yellow, because you've got the extra card from set 3 in yellow, and that plays out 2 from your hand for 4, uh, by paying 4 energy, and draws you 2 cards. And you've also got Planet Fatigue, which is a full card, so you can search almost all the apes, I think all the apes anyway. And restands them all at the end of your turn. So when the ones that have blocker, you get to block with them as well as attack with them. And this gives that added benefit if you don't have um, the field in, in play. So that's quite nice. It's a very good field skill and very handy for building a deck now in the cube. Then we've got now is some uh, blue yellow. So we've got Cab and Vegeta Lessons. So this is once again more Universe 7, 6 support, also Universe 7 support. And an ever strong uh, arrival for blue yellow. So it's a dual attack, uh, arrival blue yellow, where you have to choose a blue or a yellow to do it, which is what we really like. And then it's got an auto where when it's played, you can choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with entry cost four or less in rest mode and place it at the bottom of his owner's deck. Now, this is very strong. So if your opponent's going all in on the battle card, that's four or less in the cube. You can always arrival this in and then spin it to the bottom of the deck and end that turn. So if they're going all, all in with a four or less battle card, you can potentially just end it by just dropping this. So uh, yeah, once this is added to cube, you gotta watch out if you're going for game against a blue yellow deck. It's just quite cool. And then we've got another arrival this time for green yellow, being a turtle, another turtles as well, dominance at hand. Uh, this has block is a four cost sixteen k with blocker and a arrival in by uh, using comboing blue yellow by pay and paying one yellow. And it's got a yellow, uh, an auto where when it's played from your hand, you draw one card, then choose one or two effects. Now, these are dependent on what leader color you draft. So, if your leader card is green, you choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards, switch to rest mode. But if your leader card is yellow, you choose it to one of your opponent's battle card, and you cost four or less and kill it. So, we've got like the reverse of what you would have for those color combinations for a different leader. So, they got the uh, effect that would normally be for yellow, yellow if you've got a green leader. And in effect, it would normally be for green if you've got a yellow leader, which is quite cool, switching those around. And there's a way to cheat out without using a rival, where it's activate main limit one, wherever you're paying a green or a yellow. If there are two or more crush, Turtles Crusher Corpse cards in play in your battle area, you play this card from your hand. Now, there are some Turtles cards. Off the top of my head, there's a four cost from set um, 12 with the green one. And there's also the new ones we've just seen. So there's a way to pull this off, but mainly you're going to probably using a rival for it. So you can arrive that out in your uh, in your opponent's turn, get the auto off by drawing one, replace it yourself, which is quite nice. And I've arresting the killing sink and then have the block and attack as well. And then for the last one, we got some support with red yellow being baby Janemba, Malefic Agent of Destruction. So this is just a free cost 20k. But it just like Vegeta, it has a way to ignore energy source, but it's gonna be quite a while to do it, to you pull it off, but it is more plausible in cube than it is in competitive so it's a blocker and is also some more offering support so it's not often we see offering on red yellow cards because it's such a very strong skill but um we don't see it that often on things that can be played easily and there's only limit one but it doesn't matter because it's a highlander cube and it's permanent is if your opponent has five or more cards in rest mode negate this card's energy it's all skill in all areas so once again as i said this is more easily pulled off in cube, so if you're drafting this, it's very easy to get this as a charge without being rested thanks to that skill. Now that is it for my colors, and then next we have uh, one of the few skillless cards, I feel, because there's quite a few skillless cards that can be added from this set into the cube, and that's Batamo, mainly just because it's more Universe 6 support in blue to give that more, uh, make Universe 6 a bit stronger in the cube. And I don't, I'm not sure what you can take out for it, but I'll have a look. But it is a good, I would recommend this if you're adding the blue Universe 6 stuff. 
and then we have one of the few, one of the only unisys I feel that in set 15 that would be a great addition to Q that's generic and that is hit the battlefield manipulator so the two cost the two specified cost 15k unison and the main like all the skills are usable but it's main was because it's plus one where it's actually main draw one so as we've seen some um colors have a unison where it's just plus one draw kind which is really nice and it's nice to get see blue getting one but also some other skills where it's also is once per turn if it's your opponent's turn when you play a blue battle card using an arrival which each color has at least at least three arrival cards maybe more then you can add a marker to this card so there's a way to get more markers on it uh but when you're drafting blue but it's mainly the plus one you're going to reuse and then it also has an activate main minus minus one marker skill that could be usable where for two blue and by paying one taking one marker off it if your leader card is blue or you have six cards so being blue it gives a bit more support to those blue uh leaders and your opponent has three or more energy you can flip your opponent's leader card to their front if you do, your opponent can, can activate their leader cards, awaken, and wish skills until the end of your next turn. Now, while that might not seem great in queue because your opponent can then just wait until your next turn and be able to flip over and kill this before your next turn starts. And it probably will be gone this because it's plus one, it's just the main draw in cube. There are some leaders where they have like very strong backsides. We know, I remember some players. Um, some players that played in my cube draft didn't like the going against the hit leader because of the fact that if they went in or in like a, on a double strike uh, swing or if they had a battle card they're attacking with to add barrier or blocker, it could be popped by the leader's uh, awaken side skill. But this is a nice way to shut that off so they're not uh, they don't have it. And if it's like a leader that doesn't draw on their front side, stop them from their draw any cards on their front side as well and restrict them. It's a very nice one, but it's, it's mainly included because of its plus one to just draw a card and be a 15k unison. Put it on par with the rest of the unisons and the other colors. And then last, the last lot of cards we have are super combos. So in this set, each color got one super combo of their color. And I feel all these can be used for because of either their special trait, character, or attack, or because they're all they're alter for drawing. So with the first one we have red, and there's a sparking fire one, which is is nice. Is uh, it gives more? Op you want more options with super combos. You want some that have skills where they draw from your life being a certain amount. Ones that sparking, so you got a variation between them. And Brony's a sparking five one, where just any time if your leader's red and you've got five in your drop, and you combo this draw cards so it's open. Uh, we can it's usable a little bit earlier. And. Ooh, and I forgot the I forgot the other slides, but they had the other one. You have got they got the Cabba, which is also a sparking five in the cube as well, and more support for unit six. There is also the uh, Tien for green, which I think is just normal f uh, four life, and same with Yamcha being a four life as well. Uh, sorry about those last slides. I swear I put them in, but I guess I forgot them. Uh, but thank you for, once again for watching. If you did watch and enjoying my cube draft videos, trying to make sure I get the uh, the main aim of the channel, the when I first started it, was to get information about cube drafting out there because it's such a fun format, so enjoyable. I know I personally like like it, and there are other people that like it, and I wanted to keep providing updates. Uh, my cube list as well, and updates to the cube. If you do enjoy cube and you haven't already done it already in Dragon Ball Super, there is a link to the Dragon Ball Super the cube drafting in Dragon Ball Super group down below, in the uh, little information box, which uh, is a group I specially created for people who enjoy cube drafting or even cube drafting in Dragon Ball Super they can provide information and talk about it and stuff and in there I keep posting these videos with updates for people to help to help them and also my list as well every time I update it so once again thank you for watching feel free to like the comment if you enjoyed it and found it helpful comment down below if there's any questions you have or any other options you feel that would be good addition to cube and I can discuss it with you and Lastly, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy cube drafting. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I get the information out there to help because I don't see much of it or any of it on YouTube for Dragon Ball Super. And it also helps my channel out uh, greatly to help me get to my goal, which is a thousand subs, which we're a quarter away there. And also keeps you notified with my videos when they drop, as if and when. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.